is growing on so Jim's getting ready to show us his oldest garden here on the newer property with the most established soils and what, kind of what's growing on in there so hold tight. Hey. hey what's growing on in here? Hey I'm opening up the greenhouse so it don't get too hot in there. Okay. Welcome to my garden or our garden. Alexander started this one like five years ago. She dug all the posts for the fence by hand, uh, cut them all out of the woods. So she had a plant that was pretty productive the first couple years. Um, and now I've kind of instituted the grass fed vegetable thing over the last two years and starting to show. I mean, it's amazing again, how much, so this was all planted with garlic last fall. We harvested it about uh, a month and a half, well, a month ago. Um, and that had got mulched twice, very heavy. And I've remulched a little where I pulled it, but look at, so this had been mulched twice, pulled the garlic, and that's what's left. It's really wild that within the soil pro profile where the garlic roots are, it disappears twice as fast as it does in bare garden soil, which is also having the worms and stuff eat it. But there's some kind of like synergy with the plant growth that increases the soil life in the root zone, which is so cool. I don't know the science and if it's real, but it's pretty cool. There's another grass blade getting pulled down into the wormhole. That is wild. Yeah, because they're ha they're not happy because they don't got all the grass, so they're having to gather it. So they make the in the holes right there, you know, and they just keep pulling it down. Each one of these little things, there's a wormhole behind it. I didn't see that one there, but it's pretty cool. See, it's going down the hole there. <laughs> Pull it out, um, and that's all happening under here, but it doesn't make it all disappear. So you're really noticing it when you pull the soil back and they're literally And I told up. you that about the onions, haven't I? So that's, that not that wild though? Oh, yeah. yeah, it's just cool. All right, so this has got remulched. Um, what do I want to talk about first? Let's go inside the greenhouse. So this is a big learning curve for me with greenhouses. So this is a, um, you know, a caterpillar tunnel. Um, I had planned to move this about the same time I moved the back one but everything got so prolific i realized i couldn't do it because i was already going to have it over there with stuff started and let this stuff finish in in outdoors but i've decided to leave it and now let the cucumbers and the tomatoes finish in protection so i'll get longer out of them and not as much time on that bed but it's so funny that so the cucumbers are just overtaking everything here because i was hoping they'd run outside the greenhouse when i moved it so I decided to trellis them because I've seen that work so good on, um, you know, the tomatoes. But what I did, so there's only 12 plants down this whole line. So every runner that came across, I just tied a string up there and ran it up. And so there must be, you know, 75 runners that I'm going to be picking off only 12 plants. You know, so that's like exponential growth compared to putting one plant and pruning it like I've seen in the videos that I was going to do. Um, and then just because it's a really nice microclimate, the basil has just thrived. You know, Alexander's favorite um, herb is this one called holy basil, or they call it Tulsi. It's just thriving. She's already cut like, I don't know, bushels of leaves off it and continues. And... My original thought again was because this was going to be small, I put some determinate tomatoes in here, Scotia, which are early and determinant. And I thought this one was too, but it's not. That's a uh, Berkeley tie dye, and it's not. So that's going up. So it's working out all right. And then mix the peppers in here, and they're doing pretty good. Um, you know, one thing I have used as a pest deterrent here is snails are a big problem here aesthetically on lettuces and stuff so i have used sluggo in the greenhouse especially um it's helped because that's what you're seeing all these holes see there's a snail what do you call it slugging sluggo okay. so it's a totally omni certified it's i think iron sulfate they eat it and they die um so that's one thing and but you know i'm getting some good peppers this is a cubanelle 
Um, we'll see what they do later in the year. Um, but you know, I've been getting peppers out on and off and you know, this one's called Carmen. They get about twice that big and they'll turn red if you wait. That's a jalapeno, early jalapeno they call it. And then regular basil, we're rocking it with that. So, you know, the whole tomatoes and basils, I put those together. And then, you know, I've never grown eggplant here because it's just too cold, but I got eggplant. Oh, another one there. So we'll see. I mean, I got, you know, six, eight weeks still on that. Uh, and then, so I've never really been interested in cannabis, but you know, it's totally legal here now for personal use. Every um, adult can have three plants. So um, Alexandra got some CDB clones, you know, and I still, I don't know that much about the thing. So all your viewers probably already know more, but so this is a CDB plant that has very low THC, but high medicinal value. So I put these in here um, in four inch soil blocks set on the ground. And pretty much I planted all that stuff this way, just waiting to see how they did, thinking the soil temperatures would rise in a covered greenhouse that would make the roots grow faster. Because even in a covered greenhouse, the soil takes a while to heat up here. Outside, it takes a long time, especially with the mulch. So I was thinking I'd get more growth out of the exposed soil as long as I could keep it wet. And with the irrigation, I could. Um, but eventually, I buried all these in the ground, planted the four-inch soil blocks. But them I didn't because when I pull, because I put grass up this high around the four-inch soil block and it settled a little. But when I was going to go plant them in the ground, the web of roots was all just intermixed in that um, um, hay mulch. So I've left them, and now you know they turned into these like poles. You got some tree stalks on them, huh? I mean, look at them in there. You know, I suppose you're supposed to thin and do all kinds of stuff. I'm just seeing what happens if you don't do nothing. So um, thriving on neglect, huh? Thriving on neglect. Mixed in with, look at that, watermelon. What? Yeah, they haven't been setting a lot of fruit, but that's going to be an icy. You know, I don't know what the fruit set can be, you know, I guess strange in a greenhouse. But, but yeah, I'm loving the greenhouses. So this is again, so you build on what you learn. So that whole thing I learned in Newport Ritchie about trellising. Well, first of all, I learned to trellis tomatoes in the greenhouse here last year. Then I trellised them on this bent rebar in Florida and liked it. So now I did the same thing um, and are pruning really hard. You know, so you want to break every one of these off. And I don't um, cut them, I break them. They always snap really nicely. Um, but inadvertently, I put these rows close enough together that I am going to run a, a string across here and twine them there so I'll have a tomato tunnel here. Wow. Which could be cool. I mean, we could get frosted next week too and then it'd be over, but we might not get frosted for, you know, six weeks and then they'll be cool. How soon can it frost here? Well, one year we had a June 9th frost and then a September 2nd frost. Wow. A 90 day growing season. That is a short window. It is. Um, you're seeing mostly, you know, the same lettuces I grow, um, just in smaller quantities. And, you know, I, last year I way over planted and we, you know, I had more lettuce than I could use. So I've been kind of sticking to small amounts of lettuce and it's just perfect. You know, I'm getting like 25 bags a week, um, successional planting. I've already over there, Carly's that I got from her that were already started, finished. That's the first seeding. This is the second, second seeding and the soil blocks up there are the third. And I'll do one more that'll go inside the greenhouse when I move it. A new thing here is I never grown green beans because I hate them, picking them, but they're looking pretty good. So next week that's going in the CSA share. Nice. Yeah, so they're doing good. And those are started in soil blocks, which is something most people don't do. Um, I think it can minimize loss to snails and slugs because they can take a small plant out really quickly. Um, that's been a good thing. And then even the leftover, because I brought so many onions, right? So even the leftover ones that sat, I just left them in the, you know, the bunches I had when I brought them, left them there. And then like five weeks ago, I put them in the ground and they're going to finish. They'll just be small. But so that's good. Um, and then the ones I never even moved out of the little bunches. So I had them all kind of healed in right here. So there would be like, you know, 300 bunches of onions here. And then as I went, I put them out and I just never got to these leeks. So these were brought from Florida, 
I went through the leaks, planted them out there, and there's a bunch of tiny ones, right? So I just stuck them back in the ground. I mean, I wonder if I can even... Yeah. Wow. Look at the roots. Oh. But I think it's so cool that this, this is that same crumbly soil that, remember at Lamb Cove when we put it in water and it wouldn't dissolve? Oh yeah. That, this is what that is. You know, and it's all created, I think, from... The grass fertility? The, well, the fertility that's coming from the soil life. You know, I guess there's all kinds of science behind glomulin and globulin and all kinds of stuff like that, but um, it's, it's real. And you know, even after a really hard rain, it is not muddy. So there's that some kind of way to make it so it doesn't turn bad. Something interesting here was, so I did all a bunch of tomatoes. These are all Carly's tomatoes that I got from her when I got here. Put them in the four inch soil blocks. We'll do a soil block video with the four inch. And then kept them in the greenhouse and just kept them wet. But they definitely grew out of the block. They're grown into the soil. I kept them a while and then finally got them out here when I got the rebar. And at the same time, I had started my own, you know, from seeds in minis, went up to inch or in, to a inch and put them in four inch four weeks later than these. And look at the difference by holding them a little longer than they should. Look at the difference in the quality of the plant. These are four weeks younger and they're just thriving compared. I mean, that's still production, but that's telling me if you're not on top of moving them into the garden when they need to be or moving them up to the bigger pot as like a nursery grower and you have to worry about it makes a big difference wow. and then this was a big surprise you know we i planted this was a three years ago this was garlic and then i decided why don't i interplant the garlic with some strawberries and as we pull the garlic the strawberry bed will be there i did the same thing out there remember we just looked at it you know two years got a few strawberries yamaya loved it this year they just rocked i don't know what it was i think it might have to do with that ooze effect with all the fertility underneath the grass just filling this whole area we had for two weeks all the strawberries you could eat and enough to even sell some and that convinced me to quadruple my strawberry bed space for next year nice um, and then i am going to do you know i had a little the secondary blooms um, had some bull nosing, I think they call it. They didn't form that nice point, and they say that is a result of lack of boron. So I'm gonna do some, all you gotta do is put um, uh, borax at really light rates. They want like two tablespoons per 100 square feet. Oh, wow. So, I mean, and that's the same thing that causes the stem, hollow stem in broccoli and cauliflower. So I, in Florida, I've had an issue with that. So I put a little bit of borax around each cauliflower and broccoli plant so I'm just gonna go ahead and I got a whirly bird spreader that I do the um, the sluggo in and so I'm gonna do that and all the strawberry beds before I leave and hopefully that'll minimize that and then intermixed in this variety there's most of these are June bearing so you get one big crop but I mean we were getting berries like this you know plant city si strawberry size but red all the way through Wow. you know sweet 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 but there's some other ones mixed in that are having a secondary which are ever bearing and we're getting more strawberries right now which is cool another try that i've never done because i started thinking that corn was growing good and i'm going heck you know it'd be nice to have some sweet corn so i did a double planting there's a variety that's probably three weeks ahead of this variety so hopefully if they come in we'll have maybe you know 50 75 uh, sweet corn cobs for you know six weeks maybe right in september no well maybe four weeks all of september hopefully and maybe even sell some but again the problem has always been coons ellen always grew it but she's electric fenced and she got some as, as late as like late september because she was always slow getting started yeah and then you know mix them sometimes you just squeeze things too tight so this is you know summer squash built in you know kind of in a shady location i was hoping it would slow them down because they just get so prolific and the problem with summer squash is you're not picking every other day, they just get huge. So what we're doing is we're picking once a week from this size to this size. Wow. And then you get to start again, you know. So these are picked heavy and, you know, they already got five and six on them. Never grew patty pan before. I don't even know how it got mixed in. But it's a cute little squash. I think we picked them all. Oh, there's one. They're kind of cute and she's been putting them in 
Like that uh, frittata you had yesterday? Oh, yeah. That was in a slice. A cute little thing. Oh, and you know, there is a few perennials mixed in here, but I'm trying to keep it less perennial prone in this garden area because perennials breed weeds. Because once a weed gets in a perennial, it's really hard to get it out. That's why I do what I do in Florida. So, but this rhubarb is a really good crop. Um, people love it. No, oh, there's some silk on the sweet corn. Yeah, I was amazed. I didn't think about because the sweet corn is wind pollinated. So those are going to the silk by dropping and blowing. So you want to plant them close together in multiples. But I didn't realize the bees would visit, you know, for, there's not a lot now, it's early yet, but they get the pollen, hmm. you know? So this will just be buzzing with bees. About midday? Yeah. And out, if you went out to popcorn, same thing because there's more tassels out there. But a large variety of tomatoes. There's probably 10 out here. Um, excited about the Campari. So, all spring and all fall last year, spinach was just rocking and rocking, leaves and leaves. So I said, I'm just gonna keep planting spinach. So the first crop I did, got about this big and bolted. Second crop I did, got about this big and bolted. Yeah. So I think it's all That's spinach. Like, that's the spinach. It's a red leaf variety. I mean, a red stem variety. Okay. I'm going to grow that in Florida. But day length is really important on that. So I'm hoping there's some in soil blocks that this next planting will get full size. Um, and then the next one should go into maybe as late as March inside that greenhouse. Because this greenhouse gets more sun than the back one. So it will be able to um, produce longer. So you, you go to Publix. And you can see them nice clusters of tomatoes. Look at how big these are going to be. You know, usually they're all about that big. And look at that cluster, what that'll be. And then the next one, and the next one, and the next one. So, but still, these are subject to the whims of frost. So these could be done in three weeks with a lot of fruit on. But, you know, green tomatoes I can bring to Florida, which has been, I mean, I probably brought 60 pounds last year and they ripened, sold them four bucks a pound. People didn't, and we're just loving it, so. All right, I think that's all I got for this garden. All right, Jim, keep up the good work. Whoa, whoa, watch your pounder. All right, so another exciting video here. This is the oldest, most established soils on the property. This is kind of the original garden area. If you guys enjoyed this video, be sure to hit that like button. If you wanna see more of the videos while we're up here in Maine, be sure to hit that subscribe button. And most importantly, get out there and pound some dirt in the garden.